all these years, and the view at the Alchemy Commission hasn't changed a bit. The tides come and go, but the ancient sea remains the same. For us Vidyadara, there's nothing more nostalgic than our homeland. You're a Lofu native, Miss Lingsha? Yes. I grew up here. Listening to the sound of waves while researching prescriptions with my mentors and peers at the Alchemy Commission. It's kind of sad, isn't it? Everything changes, but somehow remains familiar. Just like you, Don Hung, I traveled far from home, and now I've returned. Seeing the familiar scenery brings back a hint of nostalgia. Uh, the view here would be even better without the Ambrosial Arbor. Oh, really? I think that towering tree looks pretty impressive. Even if it's impressive, it's a plague mark. The Sienjo have been fighting abominations for thousands of years. And now that the Ambrosial Arbor has been reborn, it's only natural for everyone to feel uneasy. Well, once a seed is planted, no matter how long it takes, it'll eventually sprout and bear fruit. In my humble opinion, the rebirth of the Ambrosial Arbor and the resurgence of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus were inevitable. The seed was already planted when the ancestors of the Sienjo sought immortality. <laughs> my bad. Well, since you went through the entire Ambrosial Arbor crisis firsthand, Dan Hung and Lieutenant Yan Ching, I'd like to discuss something with you. What would you like to discuss, Miss Lingxia? I was lucky enough to be chosen by the Alliance to come in and clean up all the old grime in the Alchemy Commission. Honestly, the Alchemy Commission is riddled with problems and has reached a point where fixing it seems impossible. I'm looking to remedy this problem, but was wondering if you could provide any insights. Well, even though I'm a Vidyadarin like you, I'm an outsider, just like my companions here. I can't really say much about a remedy, but I do have a piece of advice, Miss Lingxia. The Vidyadara and the Alchemy Commission on the Lo Fu have always been intricately connected. If you cannot distance yourself from these ties, Miss Lingxia, changing the situation within the Alchemy Commission may be quite challenging. I may not know about politics, but I do know that the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus have been operating within the Alchemy Commission for years. If you're determined to root them out, Maybe you should discuss it with the General. I see. Thank you for your valuable insights. <sighs> While the Lux Arrow from the Rainbow possesses unparalleled power to sever the Ambrosial Arbor, it can't sever mortals' desire to prolong their existence. Just like how the Cloud Knights can eliminate the remnants of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, but are unable to calm the hearts and minds of the people within the Alchemy Commission. Our Sienjo forebears knew this well, and that's why they entrusted the duty of guarding the roots of the Arbor to the Vidyadara. However, the Vidyadara are still only mortal beings. Thirty years ago, my mentor served as Alchemy Commission's Cauldron Master. She recognized the emerging undercurrents and sought to cleanse the source of the disturbance. Unfortunately, even though she was skilled in the art of healing, she didn't understand the human heart or how to eliminate the sickness lurking within the depths of the Alchemy Commission. In the end, she was framed and exiled to the Juming. I was also implicated and had to leave the Lafu. And guess who arbitrated the case and handed down the sentence? None other than General Jing Yuan himself. W what? You heard it right. The ones responsible for the corruption in the Alchemy Commission are not just the remnants of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus, but even the Divine Foresight himself. Huh. 
Alas, why is your face turning pale, Yenqing? <sighs> Don't worry about it. I understand that when someone holds a position of power, they may sometimes have to make tough decisions. I won't hold any personal grudges against him. Besides, at our age, holding personal grudges is a luxury we can't afford. <gasps> Lingxia, you're back! Oh, I've been waiting ages for you! Yunli! Why aren't you with your grandpa? What brings you to the Alchemy Commission? Uh, well, let me take this opportunity to introduce you to Yanqing. <sighs> what a small world. You! You stole my sword! Give it back! <laughs> I see. Let's skip the introduction part then. Why do I keep bumping into you? Are you stalking me or something? Of course not. Unlike you, Miss Yun Li, I have important things to take care of. You, on the other hand, seem to have all the time in the world to wander around without returning my sword. <laughs> Grandpa used to say that a sword reflects its master. I talked to your sword, and it told me that you've been distracted. You hesitate when you should strike, and you struggle to stay calm when your sword is unsheathed. <laughs> now that I see you again, I realize your sword was right. It wasn't me who took your sword. It was you who lost focus. Do you really expect me to believe that nonsense? I've been taking it easy on you because you're a guest from the Juming, but you're not taking the hint. Don't people from the Juming know you're supposed to return what you've borrowed? <laughs> just look at this flying sword. Even if I gave it back to you now, it'd just be taken away again in a few hours. You know the Cloud Knight saying, a Cloud Knight must never let slip their weapon, yes? Well, sure, I can give it back to you now, but on the battlefield, that's a whole different story. Poor flying sword. Fine! You don't have to give it back, because I'll take it back myself! But which general should I call? Between these two, who do you think is tougher? Don't get me wrong, I'm just curious. It is my first day at the Alchemy Commission. A brawl is definitely not how I imagine celebrating it. <laughs> well, since you don't approve, I won't draw my sword here. I didn't mean it in that way. Since you've already drawn your swords, you'd be disappointed if you didn't get to test one another, right? I've received reports that the delves near the Alchemy Commission are still infested with abominations. Seems like my predecessors left quite a mess. So, if you two want to determine who's better... Why not focus on them instead of each other? Hmm. Clearing out some abominations? Eh. Sounds boring. It's the Cloud Knight's duty to eliminate those abominations. You don't have to ask me twice, Miss Lingxia. I'll help you get rid of them. Oh, you think you're the only one who knows how to behave? If Lingxia needs anything, I'll gladly draw my sword and help her out. It's so heartwarming to see both of you being so sweet and caring. So then, shall we get going? Ever since the disciples of Sanctus Medicus were eradicated, their experimental abominations have been festering here. If you want a contest, I'll be the referee. The one who kills the most abominations within an hour wins. <sighs> Ling Sha, as always, you're still an expert in making unpaid work sound so noble and grand. <sighs> it's for your own good, little Yun Li. While you desire to compete against each other, I don't want to see either of you getting hurt. That's really thoughtful of you, Cauldron Master. So, 
Are you both ready? Ugh. Looks like my predecessors left quite a mess. Let me say it again. The one who kills the most abominations within an hour wins. Be careful when you draw your swords, and make sure you don't hurt each other. Hmm. Can we start now, Lingsha? Not a scratch. Time for sword play! Strike with heart! Bring it on! Destined for oblivion. Those with the low gun, those who dig the low grave. I weep for the departed. <sighs> it too shall fall. I didn't expect someone who can't even hold on to a sword to actually have some skill. That. Lance! Forward! Blade and flight! Not a scratch. <laughs> Strike with heart! Hit. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Waters of oblivion. How familiar. I haven't eaten yet. Lance! Forward! Again? Strike with heart! Those with the loaded gun, those who dig the little grave. Blade and flight! You've got style with those moves, but you're not striking where it counts. <laughs> it's such a shame to see you misuse your sword like that. It too shall fall. <laughs> Strike with heart! <clears throat> I haven't eaten yet. Bring it on! I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. I win, Miss Yun Lee! You got lucky. Why don't you just give me back my sword, sincerely apologize, and then go cry your eyes out to your grandpa? Consider yourself lucky that I'm not interested in your rusty sword, as I don't have the nasty habit of snatching other people's weapons. All you did was chop down a few monsters. Don't get carried away with yourself. <laughs> if you think you can just take this sword from my hand, go ahead and try. <clears throat> Ah! <laughs> 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 
Well fought, my young friends. However, both of you have shortcomings. One of you focuses on dodging and weaving, while the other relies on brute strength, trying to take down targets with a single strike. Who are you? Me? I am just a patient seeking medicine from the Alchemy Commission. A passerby, if you will. I thought I'd see my fill of impressive fights during the war dance. Yet here I am, able to witness a remarkable fight at the Alchemy Commission, of all places. Well, the Lafu is never short of surprises. However, I have a small suggestion for you. Why don't you settle this dispute fair and square in the war dance's ring? That way, you can resolve your differences with a proper duel and put your grudges behind you. Grudges? Uh, no, not at all. Yunli and I, we were just sparring. Hmm. <laughs> sparring? You summoned your flying swords and she swung her sword with full strength. No grudges between you. Hmm, I don't believe it. Aha! What brings you here, Lady Feishao? Have you finished your health consultation with the Dragon Lady? Shao? Grandpa always talks about you. Could it be that you are... The Merlin's Claw of the Sanjou Yao Ching? Hmm. Looks like I'm quite famous on the Sanjou Lafu, too. Of course. Everyone has heard of the Great General. Known to all, and unbeknown to none. Great General? Isn't that title a bit too narcissistic? Uh, I don't like it. Ooh, I heard there's a dozing general on the Lafu, so I came up with a humble nickname for myself. The Lacking General. Lacking in worries, regrets, and rivals. Sounds much better, right? <laughs> yeah. That's a befitting title that sounds both humble and impressive. Now that the sparring session is over, Yen Qing and Yun Li, shouldn't you politely thank General Fei Xiao for her guidance and bury the hatchet? Uh, here's your sword. Keep it safe. Or it might get taken away again. <laughs> By the way, we haven't settled the score yet. I'll defeat you fair and square next time we fight. This is how she apologizes? Th <sighs> now that I finally got my sword back, I should report to the Seat of Divine Foresight. I'll take my leave, General Feishao. Oh, by the way, Miss Lingxia, if you've got some free time, I'd like to invite you to the Seat of Divine Foresight for a chat with General Jingyuan. I... I think there's more to those personal grudges you mentioned earlier. Thanks for stepping in, General Feishao. Otherwise I'd have had to knock them out with my incense. Not at all. Just doing what you asked. How about we call it even as payment for the healer lady's consultation? Sorry, but even a general needs to pay their bills. We don't do credit here. And let's not forget, you'd have been waiting decades for a chance to see the Dragon Lady if it weren't for me. Well, you can always send the bill to the Seat of Divine Foresight and say it's for mentoring those kids. After all, it was quite the effort splitting them up. I nearly had to get tough. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I need to find a spot and get some fresh air. Back already? You've met with Jing Yuan and wandered around for a few hours. So, what do you think? 
It appears that the Divine Foresight is using this war dance as a show of strength to convince everyone that the Law Fu is prospering after the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis. But... I know you're going to say but, right? But... the influx of people attending the war dance is like a breeding ground for disorder and rumors. One wrong move and the Lawfu could be in a world of chaos. The Cloud Knights on the streets remain vigilant, so at the very least, General Jing Yuan is aware of this. As for other matters, I'm unable to say. I'd prefer to be excused from future meetings with generals. I'm just a military healer, and now all of a sudden I'm thrust onto the center stage having cordial chats with two generals? My work doesn't lend itself to being in the limelight, either. Just stop whining. At least you're in one piece, right? Before getting in touch with General Jing Yuan, I wanted to put aside my assumptions and see his momentum. That includes the overall bearing of the Cloud Knights on the street, what people are saying, and how those close to him behave. The might of an army dwells not within its pawns, but within the force of its collective momentum. Recognizing this fact reveals the true measure of power. <laughs> Thanks for enlightening me, General. A perfectly clear statement turned confusing thanks to your translation. <sighs> You've made me lose where I was now. Anyway, this is how I operate in battle. So you might as well get used to it. Are you treating General Jingyuan as your enemy? The longest serving general of the Xianzhou Lafu. Do you think he'd have only a few enemies? By the way, General, you met the healer lady, yes? Could you show me the medicine she prescribed you? Well, the healer lady couldn't do anything about my condition. She just told me to enjoy some tasty food. So not even the famed healer lady could help? Don't worry. I'll fulfill my promise and find a way to cure you. Actually, I've found some leads. Well, life and death, Zhao Cho. It's all predetermined. Upon starting my military career, I made a pledge that the rest of my life would be dedicated to being the Xianzhou's spearhead, hunting down the abominations of abundance till the end of my days. As long as I can fulfill that deep-seated desire, I don't care how long I live. You asked if I view General Xing Yuan as my enemy. No. My real enemy has always been myself. Enjoy some tasty food. So, what's for dinner tonight? Jeez. You really know how to read the room, don't you? You guys figure it out for yourselves. I'm due to catch up with an old war friend I've not seen for quite a long time. <laughs>